ready? It's the round table with me, Robert Bannon. Well, if you know the show, if you know the round table on the Broadway Podcast Network or you're watching us on the virtual talk show, you know that I rep Jersey. But you may not, because that's where I am. I'm a Jersey boy through and through. But you don't know that my mother, my mom, is like the biggest psychic, spiritual medium. If you piss off her son, she's going to light a black candle and you're dead. Me. My mother is all about it. <laughs> my mother is all about it. So I have all my crystals. She goes to all the psychics. And when I saw Roy, when I saw Roy Tomko is right here in New Jersey, I instantly sent his Instagram and, and website to my mom. She's going to be making an appointment. And you need to catch his series where he's reading Queens every single month. Roy, come here and tell us all about it. Roy, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? I'm one. You're from New Jersey. I am from New Jersey, through and through. A Jersey Same. boy like you. Same. <laughs> yeah. You, you, and you have a series, and I want to promote it and make sure people yeah. know. Mondays, Selena's titties is on your show. She is. She is. She is coming, and we are doing this together. I'm very excited. Now, when did you have the idea to start reading drag queens? So it's really interesting. Back when COVID unfortunately hit us, right? I knew that a lot of people were home, didn't have much to do. People were looking for outlets, right? We're like going stir crazy. People are dealing with a lot of devastating situations. I thought of something that I think would pull people in, not only for an entertainment factor, but also for fun, right? Yes. Fun. And I said, what could do this? And, you know, being an ally and part of the LGBTQ community, right? I said, what better than to read, literally read a drag queen? Which, I mean, they are good at reading. They give all the read and the shade. So now they you get did. them a reading. And, and boy, oh boy, are they not always ready for the read. Because, you know, we're so used to seeing a queen being very powerful, strong, right? Um, vivacious. So when you start to bring things that start to hit closer to home, you see the, vulnerab the vulnerability break down in them. Do you know what I mean? And it's really yes. a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Listen, if you want a reading, if you want to set yourself up, get on the waiting list, you could go to spirittalkwithroy.com or yeah. you, can, you can go to Instagram and follow you at spirittalkwithroy on Instagram right. as yeah. well. Yeah. What, what, firstly, when did you start knowing you had this gift? So as a child, at the beautiful ripe age, around three or four years old, I was able to see spirit, right, as a child. So I would always be able to tell my parents, oh, I see something, I see someone, I feel something, right, all of this beautiful energy all around. I was not one that was afraid of it. People ask me all the time, and I didn't really have fear of it in any way, shape, or form. I was always very open, very welcoming to it. My parents have been very supportive of the entire journey. Mm -hmm. And um, what I've noticed in you know, working with different mentors and taking classes and dealing with other psychic mediums and all that is that the spirit realm and spirit will come and go throughout our life to help us also grow and develop as a human, right? So that we're able to go through our own difficulties, right? Because my life was not always that easy as a child, right? Some bullying happened younger in age and all of that. So it was not a very easy journey. So spirit knew to step away during those really difficult times and let me deal and not overwhelm and then come back in. And it's interesting because like through high school, I would always give my friends psychic advice and not even know what I was doing. They'd be like, what about this boyfriend? Or what about this girlfriend? Or what do you feel? Are they cheating on this? And I'd be like, oh, I feel this is happening. Or they're there with this person. And then they come back and be like, oh my God, it happened. Oh my God, it happened. And I never put one-on-one -on -one together. What I was actually doing was really giving them like psychic information, psychic advice and helping them kind of through their journey. And it kind of just came and went, came and went. I went to college, did my college, graduated. And then now for the last eight years, I've been fully embarking on this beautiful journey and fully embracing my gift and reading people throughout the world. That's what I was going to say. At some point mm -hmm. you realized that this was your calling and you made it into your life's mission. Yeah. Do you ever get insecure about it? You like, I'm, I'm worried about giving a reading. Do you ever feel nervous about it? Like, is it just, it just is what you are. 
It's just what I am. So, I mean, do I get nervous? I do get nervous from time to time. Certain people might make me a little bit more nervous, but I always feel that nervous energy is good energy. It's literally your vibration rising and you becoming excited about the moment and what is about to occur. And that is spirit letting you know that they're getting closer to help you through the journey, right? So nerves to me don't always relate to something negative. And I try not to address fear very much because fear tends to be something that we create as humans right in our mind because it helps us to either deal with the situation better or helps us to deceive a situation and we mask it behind fear. So I love, love it so much. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So letting fear come in, I tell a lot of my clients, it tends to deviate us a little bit from our soul path or it tends to pull us away from our trajectory because the universe is going to say you're not ready to move forward right now to where you're supposed to be going let's deal with the fear we're going to pull you a little bit away address this and then come back onto your soul path again right so i always tell people don't let fear become that driver of your car because if you do it becomes a little bit hard for you because you're deviating from your path a little bit right so um yeah, I don't let the nerves get too much of the best of me, though. I try to go into it with an open heart and open mind. As long as the person I'm reading is coming with a really pure intention, with an open heart and an open mind, and really is here for the right healing experience, we're good. You know what I mean? That's the main important thing. Yes. So mm -hmm. you're saying that after this life uh, on this earth and our, mm -hmm. the next life, mm -hmm. we shouldn't be scared. Like, I shouldn't go to bed tonight worried about, like, my ghost coming out of the closet and that there's some... It, it's all, it's love. It's not, you know, it's not a horror movie. It's not, you know, I don't feel that my friend. No, Robert, I don't feel that. Mm -mm. I feel everyone truly transcends into a beautiful, you know, energetic light. I read for many, many people. And um, a lot of times people don't want to hear from certain individuals. They had very traumatic relationships with certain individuals in their life, right? But sometimes these individuals need to come through because what we need to realize is that we transform as humans when we cross over to the other side. We are no longer what we were as a human, right? We are now living a spiritual life on the other side, right? We're now a soul. So um, they have a lot to say. They see, they have a lot to, I feel, apologize for or relate to or try to communicate. And it's really all just very beautiful. I love that so much. So what mm -hmm. is the number one thing people come to you for? Is It's people that have crossed over. People have crossed over, correct. And then what do they ask? Love, money, jobs? You got it. It's <laughs> always, I mean, the main, the main thing really is always about career and money and love. Like, where is my love life going? Am I ever going to get married? Am I going to have children? Who's going to reach out to me? Do you know what I mean? All of that fun stuff, like, you know, who am I going to be with? How many children am I going to have that, you know, um, it's interesting, but those are normally the two number one at the forefront. What happens question. when you, when you have to give bad news or news that they don't want to hear? So I'm kind of known to be very more on the direct side with things. All right. So, because I do believe like, you know, I have to tell you what you need to know, not what you want to know. Not okay. what you want to hear, but what you need to hear, right? If not, you could just kind of figure it out yourself. Um, I don't predict anything like death or anything of that nature. I, When I started doing this work, I immediately set a very strong boundary that I do not want to ever provide anyone that type of energy or that type of message. It's just not for me to deliver. You know what I mean? So I don't do that. I just try to bring through in the most gentlest way the information that i'm getting but sometimes it's hard but i will tell you this even if i'm saying to somebody like you're not getting married for the next three years or you aren't going to have any children or whatever it might be right i'm just making up a little bit more dramatic um they're usually very receptive and they're usually like if this is what i need to know then let me figure out how i can move forward right but i also tell everybody that we have free will and free will will always dictate our life and what we want right so like you could change your trajectory. I can give a reading right now to somebody and they can go and just say, I'm going to go and, you know, hop on a plane and go to Japan right now. And then they just changed their whole trajectory of life. Correct. Because they're taking their free will and they're doing what they feel is best for them. Oh, I'm so excited. So if people want to have a reading, you they, you don't have to be in Jersey. You don't have to be in New York. You no. can read all around the world. I read people all over the beautiful world. Yes, I do. I read people in Australia, in Switzerland, in France, California. I do go back and forth to LA a lot, though. I will tell you that. I am in LA um, probably every three months. I do go out there a lot. So um, I'm kind of like a little bit of a bi-coastal queen. So sure. I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so wait, when you when you when people read, what are your options? I know that there's different readings that you provide. It's not just a one size fits all kind of thing. 
No, I have three different readings. I do two 30 minute readings and one 45 minute reading. What I will tell anyone that wants to book a reading for the first time, 30 minutes is good, but people always wish they booked 45 minutes because it goes so fast, right? So I do a 30 minute psychic reading, which I call that the all about me reading, which is basically, you just wanna know about you. You're not really concerned with who's around you or who crossed over or hearing anything from anyone on the other side. So I'm just tuning into your energy and what you want. Do you want to know about your career, your love life, your marriage, who's cheating on you, whatever might be going on. That's what we do in that one. I do an evidential mediumship one where I bring through people that I feel energetically around you, right? But I always tell people when you book that reading, you also have to understand that I tell them, set the intention of who you want to hear from and Nine times out of 10, I bring through that person and more, but there's always a chance that you might hear from someone you don't expect, right? And you have to be open to that because this isn't like 1-800, let me call my dad or my mom on the other side. You know what I mean? I'm actually trying to connect with energy and feeling what, I, what I'm getting. Um, and the 45 minute one is a combination of the two together. It's like a blend and a beautiful merge. So I use spirit, right? So I'll connect, I'll use spirit and they will help me provide insight and information about you and your life and your trajectory. I'm hooked. I'm so, because I'm so fascinated. I love this stuff. I love psychics. Yeah, I love I've gone to them. I believe in it. I believe there's so much more to this world than we can ever imagine. And so I much. hate, I hate when people take advantage and they're not the real deal. And I also hate because it, it hurts people who are. And uh -huh. I also hate, hate when there's like a religious backlash because love is love and energy is energy and God is God. And we all are yeah. a part of the universe together, no matter what you call it. So I'm here with this, Roy. I'm with you. This is all about truly a healing experience. And that's why I always, I also set intentions daily, like to only bring people into my life that truly want their highest and greatest good to be supported as well. Right. We only want to be surrounded by people that truly have beautiful love and light. That's what it's all about. Because at the end of the day, we're going through so much. We're still recuperating from four, three years of so much devastation. And the healing is required now more than ever. And I do feel like this generation that's up and coming is so spiritually open. They're so about the crystals and, you know, the pendulums and the psychics and the mediums and all of this beautiful energy, the chakras going to like, you know, Joshua Tree or Sedona or Tulum and really in, like empowering this beautiful vortex energy that we have out there. So um, I'm excited to see where everything goes as we move forward through the years. Uh, it's going to be really great, really super fun. Oh my gosh, you sound like my mom. She's got her pendulum and her whole situation. She's sad. I love it. It's what, right. it's, about, you know? it's what it's about. It is. It's, all, it's, it's, it's the rage. So how yeah. can we watch you interview the queens before we talk about me? Oh God. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we can watch. Um, so my live with Selena S. Titties will be on my Instagram. It will be a live that we will do Instagram. So she'll come on. We'll both have our beautiful... Instagram together and we'll do our live and we'll make it all happen. I, I had the opportunity of connecting with Selena. who I want to say back in like 21 or 2022. And it was beautiful. I really predicted some great things for her. Since then, her life has really taken a beautiful journey. Um, she actually just released a music video today. I mean, the timing could not be any more like, in, like divine timing. I, it, I mean, we planned this live and then she released her music video. So everything's happening very seamlessly, which I'm really happy for you. So for her, so we'll see where it all goes. But yeah, Instagram. Monday night. Monday night. Monday night, Monday night President's, President's Day. You're off from work. So get a drink, have a little snosh and get have ready to be, be read. And if you want to book your reading, you can go to the Instagram and you go to spirittalkwithroy.com. Yeah, and what I want to add about that is um, it'll be 6 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific time. And what I will do is after I'm done reading her, like the reading's about maybe 25 minutes or so, right? I'll pull some oracle cards or some angel cards for some people that are there and provide them some beautiful messages through cards as well. So that'll be really fun for everyone who's tuning in, right? So I don't always get to get to everybody because we're on a certain time constraint, but I let Selena, I let the queens pick the people randomly and they're in charge of it. That way there's no favoritism. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Well, have you gotten to see any of my other reading the Queens though by chance? Or have you seen my uh, one with Selena that I did back in I July? was just I was watching them today. You've had some of the biggest queens, you know, I winners have. of drag race. Like you have queens and winners on your yeah, show. I have. 
uh, yeah, I had Detox. I had Sonique on twice. I had Sasha Colby um, on twice. I know Selena S. Titties. I had um, Elliot with two Ts also. I mean, I have had some heavy hitters. You know what I mean? Ray Latre is also a real big fun queen out in West Hollywood. I love her. So I've, I've really worked with some top-notch queens. Yeah, it's been beautiful. And I also do something kind of called Reading the King as well, yeah. periodically. And those are some male model only fans kind of guys that I also was doing as well. So fun. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I hope we only need healing. We all need healing. That, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The mm -hmm. only fans foot model guy needs healing just as much as the drag queen, just as much as all of us do. I'm here, Roy. This is a That's market a for you. That's a fact, my friend. That is a fact. Yep. So are you going to be able to do, you said you would do something for me. I will do something for you. Yeah, I will do something for you. We'll just see where it goes and what we're going to okay. pick up on. Yeah. I'm going to first pull a card for you and then I'm okay. just going to see if I feel anything around you. How does that sound? I think that sounds good. I don't want to put any pressure on you. I'm already no, so no pressure. There's no pressure at all. We're gonna have a good time. Let's okay, have I'm ready. Oh god. Okay. All right. I'm Absolutely. gonna ask you first. Do you allow me to connect with you? Uh, yes. Okay. Because I always ask that, right? Because it's really very personal to go into somebody's energy, and I always ask permission. I think it's really important to make sure that you do that. Um, yes. It's like anything else when you're just tapping into somebody, right? You always want to make sure that they're allowing you to go into something energetically. All right. So show me what Robert needs to know. I just want. There's your card. See how it just. That there was, it just there flew it out of the deck. Well said. I said, give me one card, and there it is. Here we go. Wow. Okay, so I have the number 11 tattooed on me, right? The number 11 is very significant to me because I was born on the 11th. This is a card marked by the number 11 right here. Well, I was the camera. And you have cornucopia. So cornucopia is basically the fruits and the bountifulness of the universe that's being shed and like placed upon you right now. So what this means is that you're going to be blessed as you move through the year with a bounty of abundance in many areas of your life. This is because of the fact that there has been some struggles, some trials, some tribulations in the past years that you may have really struggled through. So now what the universe is doing is it's actually recognizing and it's saying we are now going to reward for what was difficult in the past. So this is like the sun, right? We have the sun here. Well, I can't get this camera right. You're, as the sun is shining, right? The sun is shining down on everything. So the sun is like the white light shining on you, providing you now abundance. Now, the other beautiful thing is that this year is marked by the number eight, and the number eight does signify abundance and growth in many areas for people. So this year is bringing abundance for people in general. So extra validation, right? Because so many people have struggled in the past years with just so much difficulty. So this is a year that people could really attest to receiving in financial avenues, in career growth, in family growth, friendship growth, opportunities and doors opening, right? Everyone needs to know that there's much to be provided as we move through the year. We're only in the beginning February, right? We have so many more months out of us. So that's what that card is there representing for you. So it's about you being open and willing to all signs. Patience will be key, but you will see. I'm, that makes sense to me, Roy. Okay. I'm I want ready. you to understand that. I'm ready to take it all in. I'm ready for it. Take it in. Yeah, you got to take it all in. That's what it's that's what it's all about, to be honest with you. So I kind of feel really good about that. Um, all right. Let's see what we get for you. All right, so I'm going to just have you say yes or no unless I want you to elaborate. So I just want to give you what I'm getting first about. There's a couple of people around you. So I'm just going to say, first of all, I feel, I feel three males that are okay. on the other side that are around you, right? I don't, hopefully you understand who these people are. All right, the first male that's coming through to me, I feel might have passed just around or possibly 20 years, okay? So we're just around that time framing, okay? They do bring me to a holiday period. So this could be either like a Thanksgiving, a Christmas, or a New Year's, right? So in one of these weeks, I feel like it would really relate to them, either with a birth or with a passing date. And I get a very grounding kind of vibe from this individual. This person seems to be someone who was very rooted into the ground or very much about nature or grounding. So when I when I feel that for that individual, what I what I'm getting also is that. 
get like a green thumb. So there's something about like a green thumb or something with a green thumb, okay? So this tells me that maybe he liked to keep a really good yard or he was someone who really liked to work in yard work or liked to flower or a vegetable garden or might have liked to do like shrubbery or anything of that nature because uh -huh. he's a very rooted man. And when we are very grounded individuals, we are people that are connected to the earth, which means that you're working in things that are part of earth or universe. So that's how he comes across to me. All right. I do feel like he wished his life was longer than what he would have wanted. So I, I want to say he's saying like, I had a pretty good life. I did get to see a lot of growth within family, but I would have liked it a little bit longer. Okay. So I'm going to say somewhere in the seventies is kind of where I feel his life might have took a turn. Okay. and very devoted to relationship or family with this man. So this man is someone who stood by his wife, I feel, till the end. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So I get a very strong sense of devotion to family and devotion to um, his wife, doing the best that he could do to like always support or always provide. Hmm. Was there a little bit of an unspoken word? Did someone not fully get to say goodbye properly to this individual at the time of his passing? I do feel some kind of father energy with this man. So when I feel father energy, I'm going to say that he could either be a father, a godfather, or a grandfather. So there is some type of energy with a father relation to you, all right? Yeah. He is talking about someone not being able to say goodbye properly or not being there to fully say goodbye. And I do feel like someone's carrying a very heavy heart in this situation, um, still because of that situation, because of that, all right? Did he take in a child? Mm. Um, he, he had four children. He has 10 grandchildren and he, uh, he took in his whole, I don't know if I'm supposed to I'm gonna elaborate. Yeah, no, but did he take in a child or is there a child that, there's some, there's another man around him that's around you that is saying, I know this man and I saw him as a father, but mm -hmm. this man I feel like was not born in this country. Yes, that all makes sense. Okay. It could this, be like a did this guy have a problem? He's taken me to either um, maybe like a muscular or movement yeah. disability. Yeah. Okay. Was this a son or was this like an adopted son? A son-in-law for a very long time. Son-in-law. Ah. Okay. That's why I was getting like adopted. It's a son-in-law. Okay. Interesting. A lot of female energy with this man. So that this man, this son-in-law, have a lot of females in his life, like wife, daughters, granddaughters, great grand, like a lot of female. Okay. Takes me really to the movement part of it. So there is definitely something that really took over his body that did not allow him to fully function or move the way that he wanted to. Okay. He is at peace. He is no longer suffering. There is no more ailment or any feeling of difficulty in the body whatsoever. I do feel like this man served the country at one point or served his country at one point as well. I do get that kind of feeling from him. I get a letter S or a C. Is it an S or a C for this man? It's an S. There you go. All right. So these two men are around you very strongly. I get like strength, pillars of like community, grounded individuals. And I feel like there's a lot of strength within you that you know you have, but truly have not fully even reached the full potential of yet. I'm getting that your limits have been tested, but they're going to be tested even more as you move forward through the years. Okay. Okay. There is an acknowledgement for major growth within relationship. So I don't know if you are or a partnership, right? But there's, from them, I'm using them a little bit. They're showing me real big trajectory, movement, and growth, all right? And I don't know if you're someone open to having a child, but there's also something about a child coming into your family. Okay. Okay. I don't know if it's with you or possibly a sibling, but okay. there is a child and there's a soul 
that's ready to be presented. So that's letting me know that there is child coming through, okay? Do you know someone that also relate, a male that relates to like, keep showing me like rosary beads? Um, I'm sure, I, I'm sure, yes. Okay. This man, um, do you know someone that might have been like um, a police officer, a male in yes. your family? That's yes. passed? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the R from my name and the R from the rosary and say that that would be the symbol. So is did that, he begin with a little R? That's his name, with an R. With an R. Okay. Why does he keep showing me rosaries? I think we're, you know, we're a good Irish, Italian, Catholic family. Um, but there's something with, with rosary. Okay. And my mom's name is Rose. And um, my mom's name is Rose. Okay. Is there a, a woman also named a variation of Rose? There is a great grandmother named Rose as well. Okay. All right. And then this man is saying um, the R, I don't go by the name people call me. That's kind of what I'm getting with him. Yeah. He, he was like a, a Bob instead of a Robert. He was a Bob instead of a Robert. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Okay. And I'm named after him. And you're named after him. So that man's also around you. And this guy's strength because he's police officer, correct? Mm. Mm. He passed. He passed young. Yeah. And yeah. like, I feel on the quicker side. Do you understand that? Yes. He's snapping his fingers at me and he's saying, I went fast, I went fast, I went fast. I'm drawn to the heart. Was it something with the heart? He, they say they called it a massive heart attack, but he also had cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah. It's definitely heart though. That's what I'm really drawn to. So I feel like it was a combination, but it went right to the heart for me immediately with him. So like, I think that what you need to know is that you have a tremendous amount of such strong strength to pull from on the other side that you need to really implore them when you're having those moments of low and use them energetically to get you through. But I just see really good trajectory for you. Roy, okay, let me just tell the people watching. My grandfather was owns owned a landscaping business and owned a garden center. And he oh, wow. said a green thumb that was like shrubbery and whatever. He was devoted to my grandmother who's still alive. Uh, he, his son-in-law just passed away last year of Parkinson's disease, lost total movement of his body. His name was my uncle Salvatore with the S. Okay. And then Robert, my grandfather, my dad's father with the R, uh, he passed away when my dad was only 18 years old. He was a wow. boy. And I'm engaged. I'm getting married this year. So like you brought up uh, really trajectory and it's brand new. It just happened on New Year's. So congratulations, um, Roy. I love this for you. I love this for you. And I love all the people watching me to have that moment with Roy. Thank you so much. I yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. And I appreciate you being so open. I love that. Your energy is so contagious, which is so great. Oh, th well, thank you. So as is, as is yours. And I'm going to have to set up my mom with a little Mother's Day gift and have a, a talk with you because Whenever she will eat ready. this with a spoon. Whenever you are ready. I love that. Just tell your viewers, I am booked out a little bit. I will tell you yes. that. Yes. So you're going to have to get on the waiting list. So you better go do it right now. Go to spirittalkwithroy.com. Make sure you watch on Monday. Maybe you'll get picked. Maybe he'll pull a card for you. Spirit Talk with Roy on Instagram. He is with the Queens, with the Kings, and with all of the things going on. And we'll be following you. And uh, I was a real honor. I'm honored to share this space and energy with you. Thank, Thank you for sharing your gift with me. Absolutely. So much love and light for you. I'm excited for your journey, your trajectory. I don't think that you even know where you're headed, to be honest with you. I'm getting like literally like just on the pinnacle, right? So there's so much more coming for you. I'm Thank excited. You. Right, I'm going to remember this moment. Don't yes, forget. that's, that's, a, Don't or that's a deal. <laughs> that's, I'm never, that's, let's go. I'm ready. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you so much.